the contents of Queen Victoria's coffin. Alexandrina Victoria, or Queen Victoria, died on the 22nd of January 1901 at the age of 81. At the time of her death, the Queen was Britain's longest reigning monarch. Queen Victoria was an extremely sentimental person and her final requests reflected that. Her coffin, custom designed and enormous for such a short person, just under five feet, was nearly filled to the brim before her body was even placed inside. She wanted a plaster cast of Prince Albert's hand to be buried with her. She had slept with this plaster cast by her side since his death on the 14th of December 1861 and she was not about to surrender it simply because she died. Queen Victoria's secret instructions demanded her entire funeral, from horses to mourning attire, be completely white. She also insisted that she be buried wearing her white bridal veil from her 1840 wedding to Prince Albert. After all, it was Victoria who broke the earlier traditions and began the custom of wearing the now traditional white wedding gown. While her family knew that she asked to be buried wearing her wedding ring, only the Queen's secretary and physician knew that she wanted to be buried wearing a second ring on her other hand. The ring was given to her by John Brown, a Scottish personal attendant and close friend of Victoria's. The Queen's doctor who prepared her body was also instructed to place a photograph of John Brown in her hands. Her family and funeral preparers were able to source floral bouquets and arrangements from greenhouses across the UK and other parts of Europe. Her daughter-in-law, for example, brought fresh hyacinths to the casket before it was sealed. Perhaps chief among the floral grave offerings was a request made by the old queen herself in her secret burial instructions. She asked that a sprig of heather be placed on her body as it was made ready for burial. The flowering heather is a Scottish symbol and perhaps served as remembrance of happy times with her family at Balmoral Castle as well as her honeymoon with Albert. Perhaps one of the most touching items placed in Queen Victoria's coffin was a heavy embroidered cloak which belonged to her late husband. The cloak was sewn and embroidered by the couple's daughter, Princess Alice, and worn by her father with pride. The cloak served as a remembrance not only of the Queen's beloved husband, but also Alice, who was the first of Queen Victoria's nine children to die in 1878. She was adorned with rings on every finger, bracelets stacked up on both wrists, wore many brooches, and her neck was layered with lockets and pendants. She even planned ahead exactly who she wanted to lift her body into its final resting place. Lifting along one side of her body were her son and heir, the new King Edward VII, her grandson, German Kaiser Wilhelm II, and another of her sons, Arthur, Duke of Connaught. Lifting on the other side of her body, were three of her most devoted servants. Queen Victoria was laid to rest in the ornate mausoleum she had built years earlier to house her beloved Albert. At his death, she ordered a life-size sculpture of Albert in repose, his head inclining toward a sculpture of the Queen, which was placed atop his sarcophagus. 
Her own matching statue was put in storage to be displayed upon her own death. Victoria in marble repose appears just as she imagined herself, even at the end, young and in love. However, when she died 40 years later, everyone had forgotten where her grave statue was stored, so the Queen was initially buried without the statue, and it was a number of months before it was found boarded up behind a wall in Windsor Castle. The Sir James Reid served as Queen Victoria's primary physician for the last 15 years of her life. He was devoted to her and she to him, trusting no one in her family with her final wishes. It was only natural for her to turn to him as keeper of her life's secrets. The detailed instructions prepared by Queen Victoria for her funeral still exist. They are held in the possession of Sir James's descendants as part of his collection of personal papers and the royal family isn't happy about it. The late Princess Margaret reportedly confronted members of the Reid family in public, accusing them of having something that belongs to us. Give it back. Royal demands were to no avail and the list remains in the Reed archive. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.